Hey, good morning. Thank you for joining us for our word of the day. This morning, we're going to be looking at Job chapters 38 and 39. For the last several chapters, about 35 chapters now, uh, Job has been defending himself against his friends. His friends have been accusing him of sinning and not understanding God. And after they're done arguing with him, after he's done defending himself, uh, Elihu, the youngest person there, he speaks up and he begins to defend God. And for five chapters, he defends God and basically tells Job and his friends that neither one of them really understand how God operates. And he finishes in chapters num chapter number 37. And as soon as he's done, there's another person who shows up to answer Job and his friends, and that's God. The Bible says that God speaks to Job out of the whirlwind. Look at verse number 1 of chapter 38. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said... So Job now has been demanding an audience with God. He's been demanding that God kind of you know, speak to him or explain to him what's going on, and now God shows up. And it's not what Job expects. It kind of reminds us of the adage, be careful what you wish for. Because Job wishes for an audience with God, and God gives it to him, but God rebukes Job for what he said and how he's acting. So when God shows up, he begins by asking Job a couple questions. Look at verse number two. Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I would demand of thee that thou answer me. So God shows up and says, who are you to demand an audience with me? Who are you to demand that I explain to you what I'm doing and why things are happening? I'll answer your questions, Job, but first, you better man up because I got a few questions of my own. And then he begins to ask Job, a lot of questions about really nature and how things work. He says, look, where were you when the world was created? When I, when I created the world, where were you? What, how do you, do you understand how I keep everything going? Do you understand how gravity works? Do you understand where rain comes from? Do you understand how the stars are in the sky in the perfect place where they need to be and they don't collide into each other and the earth's just not spinning randomly around the universe. And he asks him these, these really incredible questions to show Job's limited knowledge and show God's incredible power. Look at the questions he asks in these verses. In verse 4, it says, Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Again, where were you when I created the earth, God, Job? Where were you? Were you there when I started everything? Were you there when I said, let there be? If you were, great, explain to me how I did it. Then look at verse 8. Or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth, as it had issued out of the womb? Where were you, Job, when I created the seas and the, and the, the oceans and the lakes and the rivers and made sure they stayed where they belonged and didn't overflood everything and destroy everything? Lord, were you there when I did that? And if you were, explain to me how I did it. Then look at what he says in verse number uh, 12. Hast thou commanded the morning since thou, the days, and caused the day spring to know its place? Job, have, have you ever made the sun rise? Have you ever made the day start? I have. Then look at what he says in verse number 24 through 26. By what way is the light parted, which scattereth the east wind upon the earth? Who hath divided the water course for the overflowing of waters, or a way of the lightning of thunder? to cause it to rain on the earth where no man is, on the wilderness wherein, the, in there, wherein there is no man. He, and he says, look, you ever, you ever made it rain, Job? You ever caused it to lightning somewhere? You, do you understand how nature works and how I make these things happen? Job, do you even understand where, where light comes from? You know, you see a waterfall and the sunlight comes through the waterfall and you see the rainbow. How does that happen, Job? Can you explain to me how that happens? Because I know how it happens to you. In verse 31, he says this, Canst thou bind the sweet influence of Pilates or loose the bands of Orion? Can thou, canst thou bring forth Manariath in his season? Or canst thou guide Articules with his sons? And right here, he's naming constellations. And he says, Job, do you, do you know why I put those stars in the order I put them in? Do you know what their purpose is? Can you, can you rearrange them? 
Can you move them around? If you can, go ahead and do it. Then verse 35, he says this. Canst thou send lightnings that they may go, or say unto thee, here we are? He says, can you control the lightning, Job? You know, I know it seems random to you, but the lightning strikes where I tell it to strike. Can you do that, Job? Can you make lightning strike somewhere where you want it to exactly? Because I can control it. And if you can, Job, go ahead and give it a try. What God is trying to prove to Job in this kind of sarcastic rebuke is that God's creation is vast. We, we as humanity will never understand everything in God's creation. There are, are galaxies and there are solar systems and there are planets in the universe that we're never going to see this side of heaven. We're never going to reach those vast stars as humans. We're, we're never going to, to explore all of God's creation. I mean, there's places on earth we haven't even explored fully. You know, there's places in the, the, the ocean that we haven't explored fully. And so God is saying, look, creation is, is vast, and I created it. And I didn't just create it, but I designed it to work the way it works, and I keep it working the way it's supposed to work. And if God is so powerful that he can create this vast, unexplainable universe that we live in and world that we live in and keep everything going, and God says, if I created all that and I understand all that and I control all that, who are you to question me? Who are you to question why I do what I do or why I allow what I allow? Our place isn't to question God. Our place isn't to demand an explanation from God. Our place as part of God's creation is to trust God. That's all we're supposed to do. And so God is telling Job, Job, look, I created all this. I control all this. I sustain all this. You don't understand even a millifraction of what I do don't question me. Just trust me. And that's a hard place to be when we're, we're facing difficult times, when we're, we're in a tough spot and we're suffering like Job suffered. Again, remember where he's at. He's lost all of his, his wealth. His children have died. His health has failed him. His wife has rejected him. His friends have spent days just attacking him. He's in a very low spot, and God says, Job, you don't understand what's happening here. I do. I understand the course of everything and how what you're facing now and what you're going through now is going to affect the rest of the world for the rest of time. So don't question me, just trust me. Then in chapter 39, he moves from his sovereignty over all of creation to his sovereignty over nature that Job sees every day. And Job can really understand. Look what he says in verse 1. Knowest thou the time when the wild goats of the rock bring forth, or canest thou mark when the hinds do calf. He says, hey, Job, do you know when a baby goat's going to be conceived and born? Because I do. I can tell you the, the second that a baby goat's going to be conceived and a baby goat's going to be born. You can't do that. You can just kind of guess. Now, now, by now, animal husbandry has gotten a lot better and we understand things a lot more, but we still can't pinpoint the moment of conception and we can't pinpoint the moment of birth, but God can. God says, I know everything. I know when every animal, every baby goat, every baby lion. I know when all of them are going to be born. Can you do that, Job? Then look where he goes in verse 9. Will the unicorn be willing to serve thee or abide by thy crib? Canst thou bind the unicorn with his band in the furrow? Or will he harrow the valleys after thee? Wilt thou trust him because his strength is great? Or wilt thou leave thy labor to him? Wilt thou believe him that he will bring home thy seed and gather it into thy barn? Now, the unicorn he's talking about here is not kind of a fantasy unicorn we're all thinking of. It's, it's probably what most theologians believe is it is a wild ox, kind of like the American buffalo. This, this animal is extinct now, but this animal in Job's time uh, roamed all over the world, and it was a great, big, powerful beast, and it had incredible strength, but it could not be tamed. You know, even buffaloes today, we can't really tame buffaloes. We can keep them in a confined area and, and breed them or watch them when they breed and use that, but we can't tame a buffalo. A buffalo is like a tank with four legs, and they're, they're extremely dangerous. They're extremely powerful, 
but there's really nothing we can do to control them. And that's what God's asking Job. He goes, Job, do you see that big buffalo over there? Can you control it? Can you tame it? Can you make it plow your fields? Can you, you know, put it in your barn and make sure it doesn't freak out and destroy everything or kill your animals or run over your family? Can you do that, Job? Because I can. I can control the uncontrollable beast. Then he keeps going asking Job things like, hey, can, can you make the peacock beautiful? Because I did. Can you explain the power of the ostrich? Because I can. I created that thing. Can you fully harness the power of a horse? Because I did and I can. The point that God is trying to make is God created and God controls these incredible, seemingly impossible things for mankind to control. He is teaching Job the almighty power of God the Father. And he's telling Job that Job needs to understand his relationship with God. God is all-powerful. God is almighty. God is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and God created and controls and sustains everything. And Job, as a man, is just part of his creation. Job is a part of God's plan. He doesn't get to understand the plan. He doesn't get to really have input in the plan. His job as one of God's creations is just to trust God's plan. God's saying, you're not allowed to question my actions or question what I do any more than, a, than, a, than an ox does, any more than an ostrich does. Your job as part of my creation is just to obey me and trust me. But there's something special here because God, yes, man is part of God's creation. Yes, man is part of God's plan. But God is answering Job. God doesn't come and talk to the ox. God doesn't come and, and talk to the fish. Man is a special part of God's creation. See, all of the other rest of creation, the, the stars and the universe and the galaxies and the animals, they exist for us. God told us in the Garden of Eden that we were to have dominion over all of them. God created them for us. We are a special part of creation created for God. Yes, we're part of his creation, but God wants to have a relationship with us. God wants us to trust him and love him and walk with him. So here's the lesson. You may be going through a tough time like Job. You may be not understanding what's going on like Job didn't. What we can know is God's in control and God loves you. God has the best in store for you and God wants a relationship with you. God wants you to know him and trust him and walk with him. That's our only duty as man, to trust God and follow God. Thanks for joining us for our Word of the Day. Join us tomorrow. We're going to continue looking at the book of Job. We're going to look at chapters 40 and 41. Hope you have a blessed day. Mm -hmm.